Today we're going to learn about the safe usage of the sliding compound miter saw. You're going to learn about the different parts of the saw and how to safely use the saw so that you can confidently make cuts with the saw. You'll have to demonstrate to myself or Miss Lauder that you understand the parts of the saw and how to safely use the saw in our shop. The blade on the sliding compound miter saw is protected with a guard. The guard is there to protect you, the operator, from the rotating blade. As the saw head rotates down, the guard retracts to expose the blade so you may cut your material. As you raise the motor back up, the blade will come back down and cover the blade to help protect you. At no point in time should your fingers ever be anywhere around the blade or the guard when the blade is in motion. If you need to cut an angle on the end of your material, the table on the sliding compound miter saw will slide to the right or to the left. Once you undo the lock, it will, you will start at zero is a 90 degree cut, and then you can cut any angle up to 45 degrees that you wish. You must have the, ta the table locked in place securely at all times before making your cut. The head also rotates right or left so you can cut two angles at once or a compound angle. When using this compound sliding miter saw, you may not cut short pieces of material. The material must be longer than where the red line on the saw bed is at. Material must be firmly supported against the fence and must extend past the red line or you may not cut that material as your fingers would be too close to the rotating blade and that would not be safe. Slotting compound miter saw is equipped with a clamp to safely hold your material in place. As long as your material is firmly placed against the fence, you may use the clamp to hold it down in place. Just simply clamp the material down by turning the knob clockwise on the clamp and the material will be in place. You may hold your material with your hand if you wish, as long as your fingers are not within the red danger zone of the sliding compound miter saw. So you can go either way using the clamp or holding it with your fingers as long as you're comfortable with that. The clamp will securely hold it in place while you cut, thus freeing up your hand to not be near the, the saw blade. The compound miter saw is equipped with a safety switch so that you may not turn on the saw until you are actually ready to use it thus preventing accidental cuts and or injuries. The buttons on the outside must be held in firmly while squeezing the trigger on the inside. And that will energize the motor, thus allowing you to cut. When you're getting ready to cut with a sliding compound miter saw, the blade must not be in contact with your material until the blade is up to speed. So bring the head down to where you want to make your cut at. Keep the head away from your material start push the button squeeze the trigger lower the head into the material after the blade has come up to speed and then gently push the blade forward to make your cut when using the sliding compound miter saw it is equipped with a laser line to indicate where your cut will be when you place your material into the sliding compound miter saw and you have it and you go to clamp it in place you must have it on the proper side so that the saw cuts off what you wish to cut off at the length you want. The sliding compound miter saw laser is an indicator of where the cut will be. As with any power tool, proper operation and proper dress is important when it comes to your safety. Any dangling, hanging, fluffy type of clothing must not be worn. Scarves, sweaters may, may not be worn. Dangly keys, anything of the like may not be worn. You must always use safety glasses. Always make sure you have your safety glasses on before you start working. The sliding compound miter saw is never to be used to cut with the grain of the wood. You must always use it to cross cut, never cut with the grain of the wood, otherwise known as ripping the wood material. That is not a safe operation with the saw and will not be allowed. Any material that is not long enough to extend across the opening of the fence and past the red danger line on the saw may not be cut under any circumstances. You must use a different saw as your fingers would be way too close to the material and the material will be not properly supported 
and that is dangerous, and you would never, ever do that. When cutting a white piece of wood, make sure that you properly place the wood on the table, tightly against the fence, and down against the tabletop. Make sure your wood extends across the opening in the fence so that it is supported on both sides. Draw the saw towards you, then rotate the head downward. Do not bring the blade in contact with the material. Turn the saw blade on. Once the saw blade is up to speed, slowly push the saw down through the material and the saw head away from you, making sure the saw comes to a complete stop before you raise the head away from your cut material. With narrow material, as long as the material is across the opening in the fence and securely against the fence and the tabletop, you may just lower the saw head straight down and turn the saw on as it approaches the material and cut straight through your material. You do not need to draw the saw head out towards you with narrow material. Make sure the blade has come to complete stop before you raise the blade head.